Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I want to talk to you about how my Rocket Lab thesis changed uh, after the interview I've done with uh, Peter Beck. And I also want to talk to you about the one question that I was not allowed to ask him and why that's okay. And I think I figured out the answer to it. And I know it's a, on a lot of your guys' minds. Um, so I'm going to answer that question. By the way, it's that video was unbelievable that it happened in the first place and then the reaction that we got to the interview it was like i've never gotten so much positive feedback from the community and i'm very happy to be part of the community i'm honored that uh you know we can serve this um community and and be useful and we have something really really special here so basically there is some things that i was wrong about rocket lab believe it or not and I think Peter Beck answered some things in such an interesting way that, yeah, I, I just have to update it on my thesis. So, for example, the launches. So I was very, I mean, not worried about the launches because Space Systems is 66% of revenue. And, you know, I'm invested in this company because uh, they're going to build out their own uh, space infrastructure. But I understand that it's, you know, like how many launches they do, it's somehow correlated with how much demand there is and if they're not scaling that. So they're not going to 22 launches this year and then next year 30 launches, then oh my God, is there actually enough demand for Neutron and is SpaceX, you know, taking all the launches? So that was like, you know, something to watch. And I asked Peter because there is, um, you know, changes, it, it, it seems like in the launch manifest and, you know, why that is and, like in my view, it was like very hard to scale if the launches, you know, change around all the time. And the way he answered it is that this is nothing to worry about. The customers basically uh, already pay 90% of the launch before the rocket launches. But in the bookkeeping, they're not allowed to recognize the, the revenue for the full launch just when the payload was launched. And he said that this is how the launch business works. And this is why the customers pay a premium that Rocket Lab is very flexible. And I realized that it's a total idiotic metric in a way to, to track if you understand uh, how the launch business works. And this is very, very usual in, um, in, in, in this business, right? And I clearly didn't understand that before. So from now on, instead of tracking the launches, I am actually going to track how many launches they are selling and the launch backlog uh, because I believe it's a much more uh, better way to track how the launch services and how the launch demand is uh, doing. Because again, if they plan 22 launches at the beginning of the year, those 22 customers are going to pay 90% of that money until the rocket launches. So financially, let's say we do 16 launches. And, you know, those, those other, uh, what is it? Eight launches, uh, no, sorry, six launches. They don't disappear. They just go over to next year. And financially you didn't lose six launches. You still have 5.4 launches basically paid for and in your bank account, just not in the bookkeeping. So this is very important to keep in mind. The second thing that I was quite wrong about is I was sort of bullish on Neutron. Again, like the main reason why I invested into Rocket Lab was the, was the uh, space infrastructure. Uh, but the way I was thinking about Neutron is, you know, SpaceX is going to do 99% of the launches and nobody wants a monopoly. So for sure, the government is going to give Neutron, um, you know, some launches. And because, you know, the, the, the price of the neutron is so high. It's like 55 million. Even if they get three launches, you know, it's 150 million increase. Maybe they squeeze in a fifth one, you know, the, the year after it's still like 250 million launches. And I was like, they, they will get by. And then, you know, they get to the space infrastructure and then anyways, launch is not so important. But I was like, I have to say that I myself was a little bit worried about uh, neutron demand, right? And in this interview, I asked him, so what do you say to investors? Because I, I see you guys. There is so many people who like Rocket Lab as a company, but, uh, but they're not investing because they just, they just like, oh, space is cool. Uh, you know, Peter Beck is amazing, but 
it's like nobody can compete with SpaceX and that's the end of their research. Like they don't even go into financials and, and then it's like impossible to get over this hump. And basically what Peter Beck said is something I, I never thought about because, you know, when you build constellations, because that's like the new space thing, you know, instead of having geostationary uh, constellations, which is a few satellites that are 36,000 kilometers away from Earth, that cover the whole earth. Instead, now you have much closer uh, satellites and you need thousands, if not tens of thousands of satellites that basically swarm uh, all over the planet. And even if you have Starship and you would pack the whole constellation into one launch, which would make the, the launch per satellite cost insanely cheap, but they will all be in the wrong orbit because you know, when you have a, sm a swarm of satellites, uh, they need to go into different orbits, like there is different layers of orbits. So you, if, if your constellation is 3000 satellites, you can maybe shoot up, uh, you know, 50 satellites at a time into one layer, and then you need to insert the, the second set in a different layer, and, and so on and so on. And when you're looking at this granule detail, like that's what Peter Beck said, that he's really optimistic about neutron because of physics. Like this is what he was talking about, that it's like if you have a truck and you have a moped and you need to transport a pizza, like, yes, if you do the math, the cost per kilogram is going to be cheaper on the truck to transport a pizza, whereas on the moped, but the moped overall is going to be cheaper. So if a Starship launch is going to cost you uh, 50, 60 million and the Neutron launch is going to cost you 40 million and you fit the same thing uh, on both of the rockets, you don't care if the cost per kilogram is cheaper on the Starship, you're sending the rocket up like half empty. So when I truly understood this, I was like, holy Moses, like uh, Neutron might be really a category defining vehicle that will actually have a lot of business on its own. And I was like, wow, this is really, really bullish. Uh, then the third takeaway from this that also changes my Rocket Lab thesis is Peter Beck is way more strategic than even I have given credit to him. So there is so many ways he could pump the stock price with actions that result on the short term. So for example, he knows that if they announce the first neutron contract, the, the reason why the stock came from six to, uh, you know, 3.50, it's because we didn't have the Archimedes test fire uh, and there was new, new uh, neutron contracts announced like, uh, and yeah, some, some macro things, but this is like, basically if he would announce uh, a neutron contract, the, the, the stock would probably be in the fives or in the sixes the next day. And he basically explained that he has done it with Electron and he sold the, the launches cheap just to have launches and show investors. Um, and it took years to flush, flush that out. And he's like, we have money in the bank. We are, you know, very capital uh, strong and we actually don't need to do this because yeah, we don't need to raise a capital. So we will just get the best price for the best contracts that, that we can get. And that's true long-term thinking. The same thing with the Archimedes fire test. So he said that they were, the delay of the Archimedes fire test was because they were optimizing the engine to make it like as easy to produce as possible. So they could have just rushed out a big chamber and, you know, put some gasoline on it and light it on fire. And then the stock would have gone like, ah, oh, they're doing the hot fire test, amazing. But they didn't do it because on the long term, that's not what's the best for the company. And it really, really made me respect him more. And so now I'm going to go on to the question that I was not allowed to ask. So a lot of people asked uh, me directly on Twitter and I saw it on some comments. If I had to check my questions with Peter Beck and or with, with the Rocket Lab team. And the answer is, of course, yes. And these guys are dealing with, um, you know, national security launches. Uh, they are dealing with customer confidentiality agreements. And 
there is, you know, uh, SEC laws involved on, on, you know, what Peter can say and, and how he can say it. So there was nothing weird about this, right? And I was expecting that, that this would happen. And basically, they immediately agreed to all questions except for one. So there is a conspiracy theory going around in the retail community uh, that there is some hidden backlog numbers. So case in point is... Uh, this quarter, they got a $150 million solar contract uh, and they announced it as it's with a tier one prime. So like mystery, we, we don't know who it is. We, we have some uh, guesses, but we don't know who that is. And uh, this is a contract of up to $150 million, but the backlog only grew by like 15, 20 million, right? And how can this be if you have a $150 million contract, but your backlog only goes and uh, like so little and they clarified a little bit on the earnings call that it's only the initial order that they're calculating in the backlog uh, then they also many quarters ago announced that there is a reaction wheel contract that they have uh, for a mega constellation i believe and scotto did a great video because you know they published the backlog and you know that the sda is 500 million you know you you can back out these contracts and then you should have a multi hundred million dollar contract for these reaction wheels, but it just doesn't add up. It's like that contract is missing. And so basically I, I was going to ask this uh, from Peter and the first response that I got was uh, maybe I want to skip this question because uh, we have customer confidentiality agreement and we can't say more than what has already been said. Uh, and then I asked again that, okay, but then can I rephrase the question because we are not interested in any of who the customers are. We are just interested in why these things are uh, counted the way they are, are counted. Because one thing that was weird for me is when you do these investor reports, uh, you're supposed to give a correct picture of your company to the investors so they can make investment decisions, right? And then if you keep uh, let's say you say that your order book is 1 billion, but in actual fact, it's 1.5 billion, uh, then investors are kind of making bad investment decisions, not buying the company, right? So it would be in a way really weird to keep that a secret. Um, and then the answer that I got was that this is more of a question to uh, Adam Spice and he's not going to be on, on your interview. And um, basically don't, don't go into that question. And I've been doing a little bit of thinking and I realized most probably why this is. And again, this is this goes into the long term, uh, you know, non stock pumping, very ethical, uh, down to earth approach that Peter Beck and the team has. And most probably this contract is a pre negotiated contract frame. So the people who made this contract, they said, we are planning to order uh, X amount of reaction wheels uh, from you. Let's negotiate the price. Uh, but we will put in these orders, uh, you know, as the customers order from us. Um, and, you know, we can quit, quit this, you know, contract frame at any time. And this setup would be, would make it so that yes, the, like they have a contract that is up to 150 million and probably they will order 150 million. Uh, but you can only count the initial contract because, you know, that's the one that is actually factually ordered and you can show to investors that this is ordered and they, and they do disclose that, you know, these agreements exist, but it's not counted into the backlog. So it's zero conspiracy theory. Um, and it's very down to earth, very, like, I actually appreciate how, um, you know, not stock pumpy. Rocket Lab is and how transparent they are with like their backlog is very, very real. It's not a BS backlog. It's it's, you know, those orders are going to come through and they are not adding BS numbers uh, to it. Very much appreciated. So what changed for me after this interview? Uh, I am much more calmer about Rocket Lab as an investment. Uh, I have way more trust uh, in, in management, but I also understand that Rocket Lab is really a misunderstood stock on Wall Street. And I've become more patient with, with this stock after the interview. So it could be that we go back to the 350s. It could be that we go lower, 
But honestly, at that time, I would just review if there's a way that I can add uh, more to the shares because I understand that the reason why the stock is going down is that the short term fears of people like, why don't we see an Archimedes fire? Why isn't there, uh, you know, neutron contracts announced? Where are the new contracts? These are the fears that are pushing it down and they're completely irrational. Like management is working on these. They are handling these questions from, you know, the most long term perspective possible. And I am just way more bullish on the company than I was before. And I really, really appreciate that I got the chance to do this interview. And I really, really appreciate being part of this community. And I really, really love you guys and look forward to, you know, making videos for many, many, many years to come. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Uh, if you want, you can consider becoming a channel member. We've been getting a lot of channel members lately and I'm going to really make sure that you guys get extra perks and so that it's going to be worth uh, your while that you are a channel member. What we're going to do is the next Peter Beck interview, I'm going to open up for channel members to be able to ask questions. I can't guarantee that I can ask all the questions, but those are the I will be considering uh, those questions. I also have an interview coming up with Ashley Vance and same thing there. So it's going to be exciting for channel members. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao.